Hey guys, Bobby Use here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms on the Heritage Pride Urban Homestead and I'm back with vlog number four of the hydroponics rail system build. Uh, in this video today we are going to go over the sump tank for the hydroponics uh, system. We're going to talk about the plumbing and the pumps and the air pump and uh, the water and all that good stuff and then we're going to actually go ahead and put some water in the system. I'm not going to pH it and I'm not going to um, uh, put any nutrients or anything like that in it yet. I just want to get some water in the tank and let it cycle through, get our drippers put in, um, our drip tubes and uh, play with the manifolds a little bit and see what kind of drip rate we're getting. But basically what I've done to this point is I've went ahead and hooked everything up. There's just no water in the tank yet. So I spent some time this morning working on that. And uh, I, I went ahead and did a, a leak test. I took some just tap water and poured it in my rails and let it run down and run through the drain and into the sump tank. And that, that was really good because it, it helped wash out the, uh, all of the, the PVC shavings and things like that. That were, that were in the system from the build. And it also put a little bit of water in the sump tank where the sump tank has been installed now for months. Uh, it had dirt and mud and, and uh, pollen from where before the greenhouse was even built, I had that tank in there. So um, had pollen in it and all that other stuff. So I went ahead and, and flushed some water through it. I took a scrub brush and scrubbed it, cleaned it out real good and got all that nasty stuff out of there. And uh, it worked, you know, no leaks, no leaks on our unisils, um, no leaks anywhere. So went ahead and put some uh, Teflon tape on the uh, on the cleanouts down here on the end of the rails, and went ahead and put some Teflon on our cleanouts on the drain system. Um, so it should be all tight right now. Um, but let's take a look at the tank, and uh, we'll take a look at the plumbing for that, and uh, then we'll just get some water in it and get some get some uh, water going through the system. Alright, so one thing I wanted to talk about first, um, and you're going to hear uh, buzzing in the background, that's my pump going, my little uh, uh, water transfer pump going. Um, so I'll make this quick, but basically what had happened was some of the water that I moved to this mass storage tank had been in my front rain barrels for um, probably a month, month and a half. Uh, I would always hook up and use the, the, the newest water first, which was a bad idea. So the front water, the front water tank, the one that fills up first, actually had just been set and stagnant for a while and it was, it was pretty clean. Um, you know, I ran through the filter, I ran it through the trash filter when we pumped it back here, but it had a little bit of a fog to it and uh, it had a little bit of a stench to it from where it had been setting. I don't think the water's bad um, or anything. It was just kind of stenchy and foggy. So basically what I've done is I went ahead and changed out my trash filter and put a carbon filter in, which helps filter down, uh, it filters more microns out and it also should take away some of the odor and taste, which we're not drinking it, but uh, it's a carbon filter. So it's still relatively cheap. You know, the trash filters, I think I pay like six bucks for two of them. And the carbon filters are like 14 bucks for two of them. So it's not expensive. Um, so I'm just bringing the water out of the tank, running it through the carbon filter, and then running it back into the tank to, uh, to help clear it up. And you can see um, it's pretty clean looking right now. But I'm going to let it run for a little while longer while we're uh, making this video. All right, so I got our lid installed on the uh, on the tank um, before we just had the one piece in the back there, and I went ahead and installed the lid. And basically, I just I had a piece of plywood that I had cut for it. I grabbed some hinges up at the hardware store and a little handle. Handle's not really necessary, but I did it anyway. So it just hinges up and out of the way, and then now you can see our sump tank now. So um, I've got their our. Um, little submersible pump hooked up and this pump I purchased this pump off eBay I want to say it was like seven or eight bucks 
Um, and this is a uh, CHJ1500. And I want to say it's hard to make out because uh, they were like, like I said, they were like 10 or 15 bucks. I don't even remember exactly how much it was. It's made in China, so a lot of the instructions and stuff are in Chinese. Um, but basically, I bought two of them um, because they were so cheap. Uh, just in case one didn't work or if one failed on me, I'd have a backup pump. Um, but CHJ1500, I want to say this one is capable of pumping anywhere from 200 gallons per hour to 1500 gallons per hour. And the one thing that I liked about this pump, at least online, was that it was adjustable. And uh, for the price, I don't really think I can, you know, go wrong with it if it works for a while anyway. Yeah, here we go. Um, looks like uh, this model, yeah, 1500 liters per hour, not gallons. So 1500 liters per hour is the max down to 200 liters per hour and it's 110 volts 60 hertz so uh, work here in America <laughs> anyway so here's the little pump down in here and this little blue switch right here is the adjustment for the liters per hour um, so you just push it all the way down and it's full blast and you can adjust it up for less so 1500 liters per hour that's a lot we really probably only need about 200 liters per hour so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it about um, we'll start it at the lowest setting and see how that works uh, and see how that goes basically it has a half inch MPT plastic uh, threaded male fitting on the top of it I took a half inch threaded PVC fitting um, that's threaded on both sides and I just hand tighten that down on there I didn't even use any Teflon tape because it's gonna be submerged with water anyway so and then I put a brass um, half inch MPT to 5 8 barb fitting on there and I did put some thread tape on that just in case the water level got lower it wouldn't blow a bunch of air um, and then uh, I put a clear tube I know the rules on um, you know this hydroponics aquaponics stuff is you're never supposed to use clear tubing because it allows stuff to grow in it but the only thing I found at my hardware store locally uh, in that size was clear braided stuff they didn't have any dark stuff other than like rubber hot water hose and I didn't want to use that uh, I'd rather I, I will probably order and change some out later but for now I think this is gonna work out okay so we're gonna we're gonna roll with that but basically that comes up and then ties into another half inch 5 8 uh, barb fitting and clamped it off and then of course that was already there that was our downpipe that I installed on the plumbing video so that is the pump and I'm really thinking I'm gonna like having the flexible line because I can actually get down there and move the pump around I can pick the pump up and look at it um, and you know if we need to take it loose it's as easy as pulling a, a hose clamp off and pulling it out and I don't actually have to cut any PVC pipe now the air pump is right there that is going to aerate our water um, now I've also heard different people uh, discussion about whether or not you really need an air pump um, because the water is flowing through the rail and then it's coming back down through an open drain and then dropping into the sump tank and uh, people say that creates aeration and it does but I don't know that it creates enough aeration um, I don't know you know the I guess chemistry or biology behind how much aeration is needed in your tank so um, for the safety of it I went ahead and got an air pump and this one is a uh, elemental solutions commercial air pump 571 gallons per hour um, I want to say this was like 25 or 30 bucks I can't remember for sure once again I got it off eBay um, I did get a lot of stuff on eBay 
for both the hydroponics and the aquaponics build uh, mainly because I hate shopping online I like to shop local but we don't have a local hydroponics aquaponics store around here we we have one over in Sevierville but that's about a 50 minute drive and uh, it's not always convenient for me to leave work to make it over there before they close so anyway this is the pump that we got off eBay as well uh, I think I actually went to like somebody's eBay store and I purchased a lot of the stuff that I've got from that eBay store and it was a aquaponics hydroponics eBay store but anyway I think this pump will actually work pretty good for this um, I actually have another one of these that's bigger I think it's like a 975 gallon an hour and that's going to be for my bio uh, my bio filter for the aquaponics system um, but this one is this one so this is what we're going to use so I've got my tubing run from the air pump down and then it runs down into a manifold let me see if we can see the manifold here it comes with this little manifold uh, there you go yeah you can see it comes with a little manifold that converts the bigger tube into a smaller tube and then out um, I don't need that many tubes on my manifold so what I did was I just closed the loop on four of them and then I'm using two of them so that'll push more air to these two as opposed to trying to divide it amongst the four or the six actually that's on there and then we'll run down to a uh, we'll run into two air stones so that should put more than enough aeration in the water um, more than enough oxygen in there to aerate everything so anyway like I said I cleaned out the pump or cleaned out the tank got the pump installed got the air pump installed got the lid on so we are ready on this end to put some water in this system everything's tested and everything is good to go Alright, so I've, uh, I've, I've let my tank stop uh, filtering. I was running that, that filter, that water through the, the carbon filter. And the clarity and smell of the water is a million times better. So if you're using rainwater, I uh, highly recommend using a carbon filter. I see a lot of people using, uh, uh, in hydroponic systems, using reverse osmosis filtering and is it necessary I don't know um, I don't think it's necessary I see a lot of people not using it too and having good pro uh, good good success without it the reverse osmosis basically is going to take your water to as neutral a pH as possible as well as take out as many microns as possible so it's going to be as clear and pure as possible so you're going to start with a pure product so Maybe if you're growing marijuana or something, you would want like super pure water. But you got to think about the uh, one we're using rainwater for one. It's that's water in its purest form. It doesn't get any more pure than rainwater. Um, so I mean that's that's as as pure as it comes. Uh, I've never tested the pH on this rainwater to see what it is, and I'm curious to see. And then maybe we'll do a test between tap water and uh, rainwater and uh, just to kind of reiterate what I just said uh, the guys that are using reverse osmosis a lot of them are using tap water uh, they're pulling it right out of their, their spigot or whatever so maybe in our case we don't need it but I will recommend a carbon filter on your uh, uh, on your rainwater catchment because it does take out any of the the pollen or anything that's on your roof or anything like that and so that it seems to have worked really good so we're going to go ahead and turn the pump back on. I'm going to go ahead and put some water in here. We're not going to fill this tank up. We're probably going to go about halfway full with it. It's a 40-gallon tank, and that's way overkill. You don't need a 40-gallon tank to run a little rail system. I've seen guys use like 32-quart um, Rubbermaid totes, and it worked just fine. So, I mean, you can use a Rubbermaid tote. That's not going to hurt anything. I had um, I, I found a really good deal on this. This is a, uh, it's not Rubbermaid brand. It's another brand trough uh, at Tractor Supply. It was it was seriously like ten bucks. So that's cheaper than a Rubbermaid tote, you know. Um, and I also wanted something tough enough that I could bury it. I've had people ask me why did you bury it? 
Well, I saw a lot of guys growing in greenhouses with hydroponics and they were having problems with their water temperature. Their water temperature was getting really hot and um, they had to put ice in it to cool it down. Well, the ground stays a constant uh, temperature and it's, uh, I want to say 58 degrees, but I can't remember for sure. Um, it stays a constant temperature. So, in my, in my mind, in, in theory, the bigger the tank underground, um, the longer the retention rate is inside of the sump tank, and so the cooler it can stay. So it, regu it helps regulate the temperature. So while, while we don't need a 40 gallon tank, we don't even need 20 gallons worth of water in here to do this rail system. The bigger tank means that the water will stay in the tank longer, thus being underground, it'll stay cooler. That's in theory. That's my theory behind it. So we'll see how it works. So I'm going to turn the pump on. We'll go ahead and fill this, this tank up. Little transfer pump does a really super job. Uh, realistically, probably don't even need to use the transfer pump on this. Um, I can, I've got my water tank back there is actually higher obviously than this so I could just hook the hose up and gravity feed it um, but I'm also running it through the carbon filter one more time on the way into this tank you can see this water is pretty clean um, I mean it should be it's it's rainwater but even with all the setting in the uh, setting in those uh, pickle barrel rain barrels that I've got and everything else it's crystal clear all right guys so i'm just finishing up the uh, dripper tubes uh, we're attaching them to the manifold uh, or manifolds and then putting them in each uh, hole for where our neck cup is going to be and i uh, just wanted to show you these things are kind of a pain if you've never done these before they they're literally a pain to try to put these on um, so I wanted to show you a little trick that I was doing to uh, actually put them on. Um, please excuse my uh, choice of attire. It's uh, 100 degrees in the greenhouse right now and uh, I always feel like a thug or white trash or something wearing these white beater undershirts. But it's super hot in here and I, I'm, I'm not going to make a video without a shirt on because I just feel like that might be inappropriate. So anyway, excuse my attire. but. I'm working on the system and uh, I just wanted to show you the uh, how to put these drip tubes on. Alright, so the goal is to take this drip tube right here and attach it to the little tip on the manifold. And these manifolds say that they're four quarter inch tubing, so I don't think they're lying about it. But this tubing is really stiff. It's not like a regular... Uh, you know that real flexible tubing or whatever it's really stiff so what I'm doing just to kind of help out is I'm just taking a screwdriver a Phillips head screwdriver and I'm sticking it in the end of it so this tubing has been sitting in the in the greenhouse overnight now I got started on this yesterday and then Steve and I went out for a little date night so um, I didn't get a didn't get it finished but it's been sitting all morning in the sun so it's a little bit softer so I just stick the tip of the screwdriver in there and uh, that just makes the end a little bit bigger. Stretches it out a little bit. And then you really got to get on it. So I kind of wrap my arm around, around the tube, get it started here, and then just push down on it and twist. And just give it, give it a good kind of wrap it around and twist it and just keep pushing down and twisting at the same time. So sure it's not all of the drip irrigation is not this tough but at least in this application it's kind of a kind of a tough thing to get it down on there but it worked you get it eventually it's just uh doing 36 of them will wear you out so that's actually the last one we've got to put on right there and uh, so let me just get this one tucked around here and i'll get this zip tied off and i'll show you guys the kind of the finished product all right guys so here it is running uh, we've got water coming through the manifolds into the uh, pipes and then you can see it running down through here and draining out our drains no leaks 
looks like the inch and a half is handling it all right um, you can see the drain rate there it's not really like back here you can see it's you know a little high back here it's just a stream and then from here on it from here on back it's like that all the way up through there so we're getting a little bit of build up down here which I expected to have a little bit of build up because we've got three eighths of an inch from the bottom of the pipe to the top of the uni seal there but I mean it looks like it's handling it all right um, I did a little measurement just to see what we're pumping um, and back here and here's how I measured I just very rudimentary I took a pint jar there's eight pints in a gallon and I used my stopwatch on my phone to measure how fast it took that to fill this up back here it took um, right at about um, uh, two minutes and 20 seconds to fill it up and up here it took about, um, oh no, I'm sorry, it was one minute and 50 seconds back there, and it was two minutes and uh, 10 seconds up here. So not a huge drop in flow rate from back there to here. Now, if I wanted to get really fancy schmancy with it, I could adjust my manifolds back there, tighten them down, and cut the flow rate down a little bit there, and that should increase the flow rate down here a little bit. You know what? I'm not that worried about it. But it comes, to, comes out to be about uh, a quarter gallon per hour that each uh, plant or each net cup is going to get. So 0.25 GPH per net cup is what we're looking at. So um, I guess that's pretty good. I don't really know what it needs, honestly. Um, I don't know what uh, what the recommended GPH is, but you know I've seen I've seen some videos with some people, and it'll just be a constant drip, just drip, 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 and then I've seen some that are flowing like that. So I think if mine are going like that, we should be we should be good. Um, I would hope I would imagine that we would be good, and then also too um, with the the uh, lines like this it's sort of like an NFT system anyway so what the dripper wouldn't get the NFT would cover up for so anyway um, yeah so you can let's look back here you can see back here these things are kind of weird it was kind of a a learning curve to getting everything organized and I'm so OCD about the lines I started back here you can see the lines just kind of drape over and it looked really bad before all the lines draped over the top and then as I started going it got a little bit neater and a little bit neater and so down here at the end it looks really neat everything's all zip tied nice and clean and then I found these little guys when I was at uh, I was at Lowe's or Home Depot or something and these are supposed to be misters they're supposed to mist in this little control knob turn it on and off and it's not misting so I, I think maybe my pump isn't big enough to get these things to mist it's not pushing enough pressure through it maybe I don't know um, maybe that's why they're not misting um, you know, needs more pressure so anyway those are on there and I got one at the beginning one kind of in the middle and then one down on this end and I thought it might be kind of neat to have a mister I wouldn't use it all the time obviously because my water would I'd lose so much water but uh, every now and then it might be nice but anyway so that is that done all right just another look inside the sump tank now you can see the pump is going pumping water there we got the air stones going and then right back there is our little return waterfall so you can see it's kicking some water back I mean it's little things pumping some water all those little tubes when you see one tube doesn't look like it's that much water but when you look at it coming back into the tank you know it's kicking out quite a bit of water through there uh, another thing too um, you know I was talking about this pump I have that pump turned all the way up right now so it is uh, su supposedly pumping uh, 
1,500 gallons an hour if we go by what the uh, the box says. I don't know that I believe that. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things, it's, who knows. But looking at that stream right there, that return, that doesn't look like that would be 1,500 gallons an hour. Or 1,500 liters an hour, even. So, uh, maybe a little bit of false Chinese advertisement there, who knows. Anyway, um, I've got some other pumps that uh, I started doing some research on permanent magnet pumps or magnetic drive pumps and uh, I found these guys now these are a little bit more expensive um, Jabo pumps I guess is what it's called it's a DC pump DC driven pump so therefore it's magnetic uh, it's a magnetic motor well with magnetic motors it doesn't hurt that to uh, restrict the flow so I got these guys these are for my aquaponics system but if they work out good, we may end up replacing um, that one with a uh, with one of those. Because I mean, now you can see. Look at this. It's, it's not consistent. So now we've got a real fast drip, whereas before we had a really kind of a steady stream. So like this one's still got a pretty steady stream on it. That one's just dripping really fast and it's actually a shorter run with this one so who knows it could be a blockage in the tube um, I don't know I'll just have to kind of see I guess see what this one's doing yeah see that one's flowing pretty good and yeah, we might have a little bit of a blockage in that one or something I don't know alright guys so that's pretty much it for this video uh, that would be vlog number four I think um, the uh, mainly this video or this vlog was for the sump tank and pump um, but in the uh, in the midst of this video we also went ahead and ran some test water got our manifold hooked up uh, pumps are running air pumps going and we've got water in the system uh, in the next video we're going to go ahead and uh, start talking about grow media and uh, transplanting our strawberry plants into the system um, and then uh, we will leave the water as is for that and then once we get the everything transplanted and in place then we'll go back and look at the uh, the nutrients and uh, pH balance and all that stuff but for now we're gonna go ahead and get our, our plants in the system and then we'll add all of our nutrients and all that in another video so Anyway guys, uh, don't forget to uh, check out the suggested videos and the support uh, us link. Also uh, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done that. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, go ahead and pop them in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.